world is in turmoil and falling apart in so many different ways, especially with ISIS, our president is worried about global warming. What a ridiculous situation. All right, that was Donald Trump calling out President Obama. It seems our commander in chief is more worried about the weather than he is about defeating radical Islamists. And that's not all. Is the Paris Climate Conference just a big waste of time and money? Well, a new documentary called Climate Hustle takes aim at many of the global warming alarmists and debunks much of their so called science. Here's a clip from the film. The message went from global warming causes less snow to global warming causes more snow. So Boston, as of this point, is 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 in its number two snowiest winter. Is this and all part of climate change? I think it is. More snow, less snow, forest fires increase, forest fires decrease, malaria increase, malaria decrease, more fog, less fog, winter's warmer, winter's colder. So no matter the outcome, they can claim they predicted it. All right, the film even goes after Learjet liberal Al Gore. Watch this. I think it's a wonderful teaching tool uh, because it shows how we don't do science. I voted for Gore in 2000, yeah, and I think that if he ran again, depending on who he ran against, I might vote for him. He's, he's a smart man. But after viewing Gore's film, Giegengack had this reaction. And I was appalled. I was appalled because he either deliberately misrepresented the point it was making or didn't understand it. All right, here with Reaction, Fox News senior correspondent Geraldo Rivera. He is in Paris for the Climate Conference and the publisher of Climate Depot and producer of Climate Hustle. Mark Morano is with us. Uh, good to see you all. Uh, you. you know, Mark, do you know this, the footprint? You have 50,000 people going for yeah. two weeks. The carbon footprint is 300,000 tons of, of carbon dioxide that they're going to churn out here, which, by the way, amounts to less than 1% of what New York City emits in a year. <laughs> yeah. Is it worth the price? No, they do this every year. It's like a floating uh, party of the uh, size of a country. It, it uses more energy than every a African nations combined. And they do this every year. This year is a particularly large one. And the goal of these conferences is nothing to do with science. They ceased talking about science decades ago. They actually say, even if we're wrong on science, we're doing the right thing by policy. Yeah, because first it was the, the coming ice age. Then yeah. it was the, the earth is going to burn up and global warming. And now they have climate change. And as you pointed out, yeah. if it snows, if it doesn't, snow, if it rains, if it doesn't rain, That's if right. it's a hurricane, no hurricane, tsunami, no tsunami, volcanic action or none, it's always global, it's, it's always climate change, no yes. matter what it is. In our film, we go back to the 1970s, we have Walter Cronkite, ABC News, Leonard Nimoy, warning of the coming ice age, and we actually say before fossil fuels caused global warming, fossil fuels caused global cooling, and there yeah. was actually the theory that they were, the fossil fuel burning was going to block out the sun and cool the earth, but now they say that never happened, just like they're trying to erase the global warming pause, the, the, the levers of control of the global warming movement are crafting a narrative and they're actually erasing the past on many important things here. It's a, it's you know, Geraldo, the, the, the president actually said he can think of no tougher problem than the issue of climate change. Now, I think of radical Islamic mullahs in Iran building weapons of mass destruction, threatening to blow Israel off the map is a bigger problem. ISIS, Al Qaeda, radical Islam is a bigger problem. The economy is a bigger problem. But he thinks this is the biggest. What's going on from your perspective there? You know, uh, you know, Sean, I think that Donald Trump, the clip you paid at the, uh, played at the beginning of this segment, really nailed it. It is difficult to wrap your arms around a problem like climate change. And I'm certainly no expert, and I don't want to get involved in a debate over whether it exists or not, if the earth is getting hotter or cooler. I know that this was the, in the president's words, the biggest gathering of world leaders in the planet's history. But what was wrong with it is that here in Paris, of all places, the blood has barely been cleaned off the sidewalks from 139 people who were killed. Hundreds are injured, some still in hospital. Families have been disrupted. And to talk about a long-term problem, whatever the scientific merits, I don't get engaged in that. The, to talk about decades and generations and centuries from now when you have an urgent problem that the French president called an existential threat to civilization. That, I think, is why the conference I was, think you're right. if anything, as lame as you could possibly imagine. You know, Mark, let me go to you. The president talked about fish swimming in the streets in Miami. Didn't that happen because of the, the new moons, the lunar cycle yeah, in, mean, in September? I haven't seen that on a regular basis, predicting submerged countries, abandoned cities, fields that will no longer grow. Is any of that true? Oh, my God. It, 
it was like it was like an ap apocalyptic doom preacher. This was a religious uh, revival meeting trying to scare people with no basis in science. And by the way, the idea that somehow ISIS was created by man-made global warming because there was a I had a woman on Syria. my radio show say that today, that ISIS was created by climate change. Well, they say the drought in Syria. Well, in 1933, the government of Syria banned the yo-yo because they thought yo-yos caused drought. And now they want to ban coal plants and SUVs because they think it. By the way, droughts, extreme weather, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, we detail this in the film. Not only are they not increasing, on many metrics, they're declining. So if we actually, when CO2 was lower in the atmosphere, we had less storminess. So the idea that cutting CO2 is going to improve our climate and have anything to do with national security right. is Her laughable. Geraldo, last question for you. Uh, when you watch the press conference today, I just see a president that has lost touch with what is important, what his top priority should be, and that is bought into iffy science at best. By the way, and I, you know, it's sort of like Al Gore. I got Al Gore getting off his private jet. We'll show the video as you talk here. You know, that's a that's a Gulf Stream two or three, one of the biggest burning carbon polluters in the sky, and only him and his wife are on that plane. You know, we got exclusive video. So I think there's great hypocrisy here. What are your thoughts? You know, Sean, I think that the president missed a real opportunity. He admitted, the press rather, missed the opportunity. The media gathered at the press conference today at the conference missed the opportunity to ask the president, who had just spoken with the Turkish president, Erdogan, about the border with Turkey with Syria. The president of the United States said that there's a 90-kilometer gap where Turkey is allowing ISIS fuel to be entered into the country and resold. Why didn't the president ask the Turkish president about that? Why is the president now bombing oil facilities and oil trucks? Well, Mike Morrell, Why didn't he do it a year ago? Well, ISIS but Mike Morrell uh, is gave funding the answer. themselves with millions. He they is, wouldn't he take is focused away ISIS, on the wrong issue. They wouldn't take away ISIS's financial uh, well, if you will, because they didn't want environmental damage. I, I, I was shocked at Morrell saying that, our, our former CIA director. That, to me, I, I think that they did not bomb those facilities up until now because they did not want to make Turkey angry. Everybody in this part of the world knows that from northern Syria and northwest Iraq, that oil is going into Turkey. We saw it 10 years ago when we filmed our documentary, A Thousand Miles of Bad Road. The president has to focus on the urgent crisis. It may be that there will be climate change and the world is always changing and all the rest of that. But this is an open wound that's bleeding that has to be band-aid. All right, I got to run. Good luck with the film, Geraldo. Safe home when you're coming home, my friend. Thanks for being with us.